I'm Mike, and today how going vegan doesn't just help animals, it also helps humans. People are often framing vegans as single-issue people, but we're simply not. We're not just two-dimensional people. Look. After all, humans are animals, and that's the only reason we care about them. Kidding! So let's explore how veganism benefits human rights by taking a quick look around the world at people that are working in the animal product supply chain, as well as some of the astounding indirect ripple effects of eating animal products. Animal foods purchased by and eaten in the Western world affect the rest of the world, and in many cases contribute to slavery, such as the shrimp slaves of Thailand. Shrimp companies buy people, often Burmese refugees, for a few hundred dollars each, and then they either put them out on fishing boats or they put them in shrimp peeling sheds. A United Nations agency investigated Thailand's main seafood region, Samut Sakhon, and found that 60% of Burmese workers there were victims of forced labor. They include children. By US standards, most are considered slaves. They always told us if we didn't work, they'd shoot us. This shrimp is mostly exported and the Associated Press tracked custom records and found that 40 US brands and 150 stores, including Whole Foods, were carrying shrimp with suspect origins. Whole Foods, of course, denies this allegation. Now to the Amazon on the other side of the world. Numbers vary, but according to this World Bank report, approximately 70% of rainforest destruction in the Amazon is due to animal agriculture, which means we are actually displacing tribes to eat meat. Now we often think of the people that are actually cutting down the trees in the rainforest as the evilest of people, but as this 2015 Al Jazeera article mentions, the people that are often cutting down, clearing the rainforest are people that are slaves and debtors. A lot of this slave cleared land is used to grow feed, like soy, and the US is importing an increasingly large amount of beef from Brazil. For example, this corned beef in the past has been made from cattle, fed soy, grown on slave cleared rainforest land. Of course, large companies like Cargill in the US refuse blame with statements like this from their Minnesota spokeswoman. I think it is unfair of folks to point at Cargill and say Cargill is solely responsible for the actions of other people. AKA, I don't think it's fair to point out that we buy directly from slave owners. I could spend a lot of time on the conditions of slaughter workers around the world, but I would just point to this Cambodian girl who was sold for $250 and was forced to work starting at 3 a.m. all day for virtually nothing. If you really want to get depressed, you can watch that video about her that I will link below. But now you're probably thinking, isn't all of this horrible inhumane treatment also in the garment industry and other agricultural industries? And to that I have to say, yes, vegans should absolutely try and buy fair trade vegan products. But as Human Rights Watch says, there are, quote, systematic human rights violations embedded in meat and poultry industry employment making worker mistreatment distinctly worse and more endemic than other agricultural sectors. And this is also true in developed countries like the US, which brings me to slaughterhouse and factory farm workers. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show any graphic footage here, just for you. Vegans probably have the least amount of empathy for these type of people, and yes, some of them are psychopaths, as has been made clear by undercover slaughterhouse and factory farm footage, but a lot of them are immigrant workers who don't have much of a choice and often view it as a temporary option. Now, if I go too deep into this, you're just gonna feel like crap and stop watching the video altogether. So let's do this really quick. Starting with air quality, between occupational asthma, bronchitis, and just breathing in a lot of crap, nearly one out of three of these workers have respiratory issues. And according to the CDC, kids around factory farms have increased levels of asthma. Then there's all of the sharp objects and knives. One factory farm nurse said, quote, I could always tell the line speed by the number of people with lacerations coming into my office. Then there's the risk of falling into a toxic manure lagoon like a man from Idaho just did the other day. And finally, there's post-traumatic stress disorder. As one slaughterhouse worker famously said, quote, the worst thing worse than the physical danger is the emotional toll. It is so bad that some researchers deemed it not just a hazardous, but quote, an ultra-hazardous activity for psychological well-being. 
These effects spill into the community, which is why many studies show that the addition of a slaughterhouse leads to a spike in crime, which is often two to four times as much crime. All right, that's it for how horribly workers are treated. Now to some astounding ways that eating animal products can negatively affect humans around you. Would you say that being born with a normal-sized brain is a human right? Well, that right might just be taken away from you if your mother was exposed to grilled meat fumes, also known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are potent carcinogens that are not produced while grilling plants. As this study shows, exposure to meat fumes during pregnancy leads to a smaller birth weight and a smaller head circumference. And as this other study shows, just living near a restaurant that is grilling meat can increase your lifelong risk of cancer. Then there's swine flu and other infectious diseases. From this report, quote, because CAFOs are concentrated animal feeding operations tend to concentrate large number of animals close together, they facilitate rapid transmission and mixing of viruses. That combined with how we use up to 87% of antibiotics on animals creates ideal conditions for infectious disease. Just look at the swine flu pandemic of 2009, which infected nearly 400,000 people in Asia and killed over 2,000. Whether it's swine flu, avian flu, or other pathogens, if you care about humans, you shouldn't support this. There are many other ways that buying and eating animal products makes human lives horrible, but I don't have time to cover them all in depth in this video, so I'll just do a lightning round of a couple more. There's our right to clean water. The solid waste produced from a dairy with 2,500 cows is equivalent to a human city of 400,000 people with no wastewater treatment plant. Then there's the leather tanning industry in which workers are exposed to massive amounts of noxious fumes and carcinogens and have increased levels of various cancers. Children as young as 11 also work in some tanneries without gloves, boots, or masks. They work long hours for as little as 50 cents a day. And then there's septic workers who have to clean out septic tanks mainly because of the buildup of cholesterol over time from eating animal products. Disgusting. Congratulations, you made it through all of that horrible stuff. Good on you. And as I mentioned, yes, vegans should absolutely put an emphasis on buying fair trade vegan products like fruits and vegetables. But in the end, if you are in the business of treating animals horribly, you are a lot more likely to treat your human workers horribly. And to all of those that say, I am exempt from the human impact of animal products because I only eat local meat from small farms. Do you really? Do you never get shrimp at a Thai restaurant or just whip by a Taco Bell on your way to work or any other restaurant for that matter? a great step to avoid contributing to human rights abuses and the very best step to stop contributing to animal rights abuses is to simply go vegan. All right, that's all for today. Feel free to like and subscribe since it helps the channel out a lot. And that's all. Thank you for watching.